Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, three big lessons that I've taken away from the last couple of weeks of using the blood of Baal. Uh, now it's uh, been a couple of weeks and it's been some very exciting times for all of us, I'm sure we can agree on that. And we've had some really big boosts to our capacity on the battlefield. We've become really deadly, really, really vicious. And it's just, it's just great to be a blood angel right now. Uh, you know, what more can you say? But um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, I don't, I've learned a lot of things. And uh, there's sort of three big things that I want to uh, share with you today. And, uh, you know, some of that might be a little, some of them might be a little bit surprising. Now, um, you know, it's all well and good speculating about, ah, oh, this is going to be great and that's going to be great. And a lot of people have said, you know, ah, oh, blood angels are going to be really powerful. You know, they have the ability to be really powerful. And you've heard that repeated several times, you know, over and over again. But, you know, what makes them really, really powerful? Why are they really, really powerful? Well, I think the reason why this has been repeated so often is because the blood angels have become very cerebral now and maybe they haven't quite been fully worked out yet. You know, there's just so much flexibility in them now, so many options, so much variety. You know, we haven't had the time to work them uh, everything out. But, um, you know, there's some things that we can get stuck into straight away that I can tell you right now really, really have been working for me. But when I say the blood angels become very cerebral, what do I mean? Well, you know, we are just as vulnerable as we always were, essentially. We've gained a couple of things that make us tougher, you know, transhuman physiology, um, you know, visage of the damned for sanguinary guard, which I'll go into later, that kind of thing. So I've become a little bit tougher, but we are essentially just as vulnerable to all the new rules, uh, all the new Astartes, like tactical doctrines, as we always were, but we'll die essentially just as quickly. But our rules, uh, you know, let us maximize our resources so it really rewards clever play so as we take those losses we can uh, manipulate the tactical doctrines as we progress through them and we can engage savage echoes at just the right time so that we've uh, maximized our shooting from our shooting units in the beginning phase of the game and then when it comes down to the nitty-gritty when it comes down to the uh, close combat when it's time to get those chainsaws whirring you know, we can max it up and make sure those units that we've got left on the battlefield are really taking heads. So, you know, it's a re it rewards really clever play. Now, that's not to say that you should be taking only utility lists, but, and I will say, you know, utility lists are very, very cool and extremely viable. And what I mean by utility list is they have a solid core that can, you know, do the main fighting, you know, plenty of infantry, that kind of thing. But with their various other units, fun units almost, but very useful units, you know, you've got your assault marines, uh, with jetpacks you've got you, that are cheap and maneuverable but very very killy against other infantry at the moment um, you've got your bar predators loads of stuff like that um, that can do various jobs for you that let you really play cleverly uh, and uh, manipulate the massive amount of rules and stratagems and the tactical doctrines and the benefit of savage echoes uh, to make uh, any combination of units really work uh, so you can do really whatever you want whatever the game demands whatever the objectives demand of you you can do that with your units and um, but to do this you need a lot of cp like th that's something to take away from this you need a lot of cp uh, to play in this cerebral way uh, you're going to need to take a minimum of you know two battalions and you're going to need to have another detachment as well you're going to have to have three detachments you're going to need to have those 14 command points um you know five for each battalion uh, three for being battleforged and one for you know having a vanguard or something like that uh, detachment. So you really, really need those CP uh, to play in this cerebral way to be able to make any unit that you've got do exactly what it needs to do, and uh, you know really play a, a key part in the battle whenever you need that to happen. So you need to have a lot of resources at your disposal. Now, um, so that's the sort of cost of variety, if you know what I mean. Now. Um, that's not to say that you, you have to play uh, in that way. You know, you can also do loads of cool stuff now. Uh, I'd, I'd say probably I propose, I haven't done it myself yet, but I've used assault cannons and I'd say that, you know, assault cannon spam could well be back. If you've got three bar predators, and maybe three razorbacks or even more razorbacks, all with assault cannons, you know, putting out tons and tons of shots. You know, you can even put like 15 wounds on a night with sort of three... Uh, three bar predators and three razorbacks all firing 12 shots each and then the heavy bolts as well with that AP-2 taking them down to a five up in 
or you know, if they, even if, if they've got a four up in them, they are going to be all right, but you're going to do some serious damage. Um, so, you know, or you can do massive assault spam. You could have loads and loads, you know, two units of death company, a unit of sanguinary guard, units of terminators, uh, loads of assault marines just charging across the board, um, striking into the enemy, you know, taking damage, but you got, you know, just overwhelming them with a the whole 2,000 points, just charging, bloodthirsty, ramping it up to Savage Echoes as soon as possible, getting in turn three, uh, you know, just being really, really aggressive. That'll work too. Or you could spam infantry. I'm really looking forward to uh, making use of my uh, new infantry, pure infantry list, because again, that's going to be really, really powerful. Um, just having loads, loads of bodies on the ground, really making use of the tactical doctrine um, to maximize my bolt of fire. And then as I lose infantry, switching it up at the right time, maybe not just going straight for uh, Savage Echoes in turn three, but maybe wait until turn four, perhaps, uh, until I really need to get into close combat and having a bit more of a firefight uh, with a mass infantry army. So, you know, there's just loads and loads of options. You can do anything you want with clever timing. Uh, of the tactical doctrines and moving on to savage echoes at the best time when it suits your army to really sort of uh, commit to the coup de grace to really do that final blow to the enemy forces. Um, you know, you can really, really uh, just destroy your opponent. That's where our power is in clever cerebral play of maximizing your unit's power at just the right time and sort of being aware of what units and what resources you have on the battlefield and how you can combine them together. So it's just uh, what we've always had to do, but now uh, we've been rewarded for that type of play and we can, we're can we not going to sort of fluff it. A lot of our stratums and that kind of thing just make sure that we're not going to you know, set up these clever plays and then just fall flat on our face through some bad dice rolls. You know, we now have that guarantee that these clever plays will come off and it, when they do come off and everything comes together, as you know, when a perfect Blood Angels assault comes together, it's just absolutely... Uh, terrible to behold you know you, you massacre your opponent you absolutely roll uh, over their lines and just destroy them and tear them apart and uh, you know that kind of play is absolutely very possible uh, with these new rules um, now that's sort of the the first thing to say you know play play cleverly and uh, don't be afraid to try out uh, new things and just be very aware of sort of um, spending those command points uh, when you want, you know, and just being what really tricksy. Like, the Blood Angels will almost be like playing against the Eldar now or something like that, where, you know, they're just constantly doing something that just gives them that little boost, you know, constantly got something annoying, constantly got some extra boost to their rules. You know, we're going to be really, really powerful through that, uh, that style of play. Now, the next thing I want to talk about might be a little bit of a curveball. It's a little bit off-piste, so to speak. But I want to state right now that Bile Predators are pretty useful. I'm not saying they're this amazing game-changing unit, but they can actually really do some good work for you uh, as a utility unit. Um, so what do I have, you know, mentioned utility units a lot and talking about the Bile Predator now, well, let me give you a good example of what a utility unit can do for your list as a whole. So what's one of the big problems that the Blood Angels Assault can come across in the early turns? Well, it is, of course, Deep Strike uh, blocking uh, units that are just uh, uh, deployed in advance of the enemy lines uh, and preventing you from really placing your deep strike units uh, where you want them for, to get off a guaranteed assault and also infantry screens that are spread across the front lines of your opponent cheap infantry screens they don't care about losing them uh, but they can be quite difficult to shift um, and especially with the variety of stratums and rules these days which allow you to make things plus one uh, armor and covered, uh, uh, or just plus one armor in, de in general, like the Dark Elder and the, Inf uh, the Imperial Guard have. Uh, you've got minus one to hit for things as well. You know, loads of different stuff uh, that can make you uh, make it hard to clear screens of infantry and make it hard to dig deep strike blocking units out of the cover that they're in. And the Bile Predator can uh, go a long way towards helping you resolve these issues. Now, I'm not saying you want to have loads of Bile Predators, because if you've got like a few of them, uh, they're going to be, you know, Bile Predators are not tough, they're pretty expensive, and they're going to be focused down quickly. But one cheeky Bile Predator can just spend his time on the battlefield hunting, and he'll do his damage before uh, the opponent can really stop him 
and then it'll quickly drop down the target priority list. And why is that? Well, it's because in the first turn, you'll, of course, have an additional minus one AP to his heavy weapons. Uh, and that means he can really do that work. He can drive up uh, and move. Don't worry about moving him, uh, because uh, if you're just shooting like a little five-man unit, that's uh, toughness three, but dug into cover, like an Eldar Ranger unit or, you know, something like that. You know, a variety, you know, there's loads and loads of units that people use, scouts, loads of things. Um, but if they're advanced up and then and you can see them, then you'll be able to dig them out. And if they're, you know, if it's, you think they're going to be quite tough, if they're really dug into cover, and they've got special rules that are making them harder to kill, then you can always spend one command point for big guns never tire. And that lets you move and fire normally. So you've actually got a really flexible unit. You can move 12 inches and then spray off 18 shots. Against a toughness three unit, those assault cannons are going to be wounding on twos, 12 shots. Then you've got those heavy bolters coming in, extra six shots. They'll be wounding them on threes. And against toughness four infantry and above, you know, you're just going to be wounding on threes with uh, all those shots. And you're going to be hitting well, you know, decently enough. And if you, even if you don't spend that command point and you're only hitting on fours, you know, if it's a, quite a, a, a weak unit or they're not necessarily in cover, or they don't have a decent armor save, they're, you know, quite flimsy, uh, but they're just there blocking a, a future deep strike assault, you can just pick them off and open up that flank to a deep strike, and that will just pay dividends in the next turn. Um, so just really, really flexible unit. And then, of course, after that, after you've lunged forward and you know snipped off that little, uh, that little blocking unit, that little uh, obstacle to your plans, uh, you will, of course, switch onto the tactical doctrine and just be uh, giving your bolters a buff. You'll probably not stay in the heavy doctrine. Because let's face it, we're not designed as a faction to be really focused on uh, heavy support. We can do it, and it's viable, uh, and you can make it work. But for the main part, you'll probably switch off the heavy support doctrine. And what that means is the Baal Predator then becomes not that good, which is actually an advantage to its survivability. Because at that point, remember, you're also going to have a lot more dangerous stuff coming in. Uh, you're going to have Sanguinary Guard, you know, maybe uh, Death Company. Uh, you're going to have your captains, uh, Smash Captain uh, or two, uh, getting into sort of danger close range there. You're going to be uh, bringing in a, a lot of target saturation on your opponent. And that Baal Predator is all of a sudden, because he's not AP minus two anymore on his heavy weapons, he's all of a sudden, um, you know, just not that dangerous to your opponent anymore. Instantly plummet. And that allows him to carry on doing that work. It allows him to carry on just spraying into little exposed units of infantry. Uh, if your opponent has infantry, uh, initi say you're playing ITC, and so your opponent's uh, got units in magic boxes, so you can't initially shoot them with the Vile Predator, but he may well, or uh, they may well have to move them out of those magic boxes to get them onto objectives. You don't necessarily get uh, to hide in magic boxes on objectives. Often you have to move off, and as they expose themselves and run to take objectives in the later game, a game your Baal Predator is just hunting on the battlefield, just lying in wait, and he'll just strike, spray off those 18 shots, and just shred a small unit. So your opponent's utility unit, if your opponent's just got multiple small units of infantry, that Baal Predator um, is going to just last the game because your opponent can't afford to spend resources on killing him when he, he's got so much other deadly stuff in his face. He's desperately trying to kill off as much of your assault units before you get Savage Echoes off. Uh, so your Bar Preds is you know, not firing at optimum capacity anymore, but he's going to be doing that work for you. They are just a useful unit. Not an amazing unit, but a useful unit. And if that's the way you want to play, if you play against clever opponents who are always just moving these little units around, blocking your advances, blocking your lines of fire, blocking your lines of assault, screening this and that. If you play against people like that, a Baal Predator is going to be really useful to you. Now, the final thing I want to talk to you about today are the Sanguinary Guard. And these guys are just, frankly, they're just absolutely brutal. They are murderous. They, <laughs> the lengths you can go to to make these guys tear through your opponent's lines is just crazy. And I'm going to break that down for you now. I'm going to explain uh, bit by bit in detail what you can do with this unit to just power them up to the absolute max. For Sanguinius, for the Emperor, you are going to be taking heads with your Sanguinary Guard. Now, you guys know, you know, long-term viewers know that I have always favoured Death Company over Sanguinary Guard. That's not to say I don't like so Sanguinary Guard. Um, 
and I use them, you know, quite a lot. But I, if I'm only going to take one big assault unit, I would always take Death Company. Um, but now it's not a case of either or. You just have to take both, really. The sang they are just so good. Now, the first thing I'll say is that the Sanguinary Guard give you the ability to um, do a really resilient and powerful drop down deep strike in turn two and actually save your death company for another wallop in turn three. And that sort of one two punch um, is just crippling to your opponent's lines because both units are able to just swallow up a flank um, with uh, the correct support and placement. Now, what I'd recommend with your Sanguinary Guards is actually to pair them with a cheap unit of Terminators um, because the Terminators can come down with those Storm Bolters and for one command point, you can spend Fury of the First and get those Terminators hitting on twos. And your Sanguinary Guards are also, if you've got the Tactical Doctrine off because they've got their weapons or Assault too, they will be AP minus two. So that's the first thing. Um, so you're, you're going to be shooting... Um, just an absolute torrent of fire. And if you've also got plenty of infantry because you've you know, taken two battalions to max out on uh, command points, and if and let's say you've got those guys in rhinos, transports, razorbacks, whatever, in the first turn, these guys can hop out as well and just form a, a line, a sort of beachhead in front of your opponent's forces. So you can sort of hop out almost potentially 30 infantry, 20 to 30 infantry, maybe four to six squads just in the center of the field or, you know, getting up to the midfield and you deep strike this ter these terminators nice 165 points for five termies you've got five storm bolts in there you spend one command point and they're hitting on twos four shots each you know that's going to do some damage ap minus two strength four of course um and your sanguinary guard like i'm talking a unit of eight eight or nine sanguinary guard maybe seven if you need to keep it a little cheaper but no less because those sanguinary guards you're going to be spending command points on them to absolutely ramp them up to the max so the more you have in there, the further those command points will go. You know, the more value you'll get for them, the more efficient your command point expenditure will be. And believe me, you will have not many command points um, after turn two. You probably have no command points at the end of turn two, definitely no command points at the end of turn three, and you won't have spent many on rerolls. You're just going to be burning through stratagems at an insane rate. Um, but as I said, just powering these guys up to the max. So, yeah, first things first, you drop these guys down and you add a little support with a five-man Terminator squad. And that creates a solid presence. It's an anchor for your force. It's a beachhead uh, in the center of the board that you can move out from uh, to all four corners of the board, wherever you need to go because you're fast enough and you've got a solid presence there that is going to absorb a lot of firepower to get rid of it. You know, it's not going to be shiftable, especially if you've uh, got infantry mixed in there as well. Um, now... Uh, you've also got um, death on... Well, I'll do this in a certain order. So you've got then explosive judgment. Now, this is a, a specific new stratagem for the Sanguinary Garden. It's one CP. What it allows you to do is reroll wounds uh, with your Sanguinary Guard's bolter weapons, the Assault 2 bolter weapons, and your opponent doesn't get the benefit of cover. So uh, what that means is if you've got eight guys, you're spraying off 16 shots... You'll be hitting on threes, um, but if you're firing, get, let's say, an infantry and you're placed in the centre of the board, so you've got plenty of targets, or not necessarily in the centre of the board, but in the, you know, in front of the majority of your opponent's forces, then you'll have units that you can assault and units you can shoot at. So you can, or you, if they've got a screen, you can shoot a screen away and get in there. And you're going to be re-rolling wounds. And if you've got your termies there, then you're spraying in. Tons of shots from the Termies. You've got 20 shots from the Termies hitting on twos. They're AP minus two. You've got uh, AP minus one, sorry. And then you've got the Sanguinary Guard, which comes with AP minus one, which has an additional AP minus one stacked onto it. So they're AP minus two. You are just going to spray loads of firepower down. Then you add in all your bolters. That will be uh, hopefully in rapid fire range, or even if they're not, even if your opponent's placed quite far back and you're only in the midfield. You'll be spraying away got that AP minus one, you're digging people out of cover and you're just going to be shooting a torrent of bolter fire into your opponent's lines and just clearing off screens, clearing off units, uh, hammering apart uh, units that are threatening you in a counter assault. You're just, you're just going to be killing stuff, basically, long story short. And, you know, if units are in cover with that explosive ju judgment, when you sanguinary guard are firing off, 
They're essentially AP minus three when they're shooting things in cover because they've got the tactical doctrine making them an additional AP minus one. They've got the flat AP minus one on their fancy gold leaf bolt rounds that they have. And then you're ignoring their cover. So you're just murdering units that are in cover. It's just absolutely brutal. Really, really, really powerful. But then it gets better. And that's only one command point. You spent two command points on this combo so far. And one of them wasn't even on the Sanguinary Guard. It was on the Termes, the Fury of the First. Uh, but then you're going to spend some more command points. So you're going to spend one command point on Death on the Wind and one command point on Visage of the Damned. And this makes these guys super powerful. So when they get into close combat, remember you only need eight. So you don't even need to necessarily do... Um, if you've killed a lot of stuff, you may not be able to get a charge off. So you might have to spend that command, two command points to do a 3d6 charge. Or you may dig these guys into cover and just wait for a turn three assault, so to speak. It just depends on the situation, the context of the battle, how close they are to you, whether an assault is now viable after that massive shooting phase. But if you can get the assault off, what you're going to do is you're going to keep in mind these two stratagems, as I mentioned, Death on the Wind and the Visage of the Damned. Now, Death on the Wind is basically the attacky version of transhuman physiology. And when I say it like that, I want you to realise how significant Death on the Wind is. And what it does is it means that you uh, always, because you've got D3 damage, you always do a minimum of two damage. So it says a damage result of one always counts to two. So when you roll that D3, if you get a one or a two, it doesn't matter, it counts to three or four. So you've got four results on that dice, one, two, three, or four, which will do two damage. And a five or a six is going to give you that boost of three damage per weapon. And combined with the... Um, shock assault rule which is giving these guys an extra attack so they've got three attacks each uh, and combined with you know your standard blood angels plus one to wound you're going to be getting a lot of wounds through and that one command point especially with the ap minus three uh, is going to allow you to just put a lot of damage on the opponent it's going to kill those damage two weapons and we all know transhuman physiology you know making it almost uh, well making it so that you can only be wounded on a four five or six giving you that guarantee giving you that sort of uh, sort of solid block of resilience, that solid obstacle to what your opponent's trying to achieve is really, really powerful. And having this sort of swinging it, turning it on its head, and having something that gives you that solid guarantee of damage is just going to be so, so powerful. It's one command point. So if you've got a big block of eight guys and you choose to attack with them first, they're just going to rip through units, which is absolutely crazy. So that's death on the wind for one command point. Um, and then you've got, and I'll read it out to you now, just so you can actually uh, so you can actually hear what it says. One command point. Uh, use this stratagem in the fight phase. Select one sanguinary guard unit from your army till the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit. Treat a damage result of one as two. It's that simple. It's just written in plain English. That is what it does. It's powerful. Now, your other one, the other one I mentioned is Visage of the Damned, and that's, again, just one CP, and it's very, very useful, and it's, again, uh, it's essentially just for, you know, uh, Sanguinary Guard in the main part, because you have to have the Death Mask ability, but it says this, use the stratagem in the fight phase, select one Blood Angels unit from your army that has the Death Mask ability, so your Sanguinary Guard, until the end of the phase... When resolving an attack against that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. So not only have you given that massive wallop to your opponent's uh, unit and you've done a lot of damage and killed off a lot, but those reduced incoming attacks that they're actually getting on you, if anything's left, uh, will um, have minus one to hit. So because you've got that two up armor save, it just makes you so viable into going into mass uh, sort of fighting when you're outnumbered, so to speak, you can assault multiple units. You can take on sort of two units, uh, two big units of uh, enemy infantry or whatever you need to. Um, but even if you're outnumbered, you know, the return and you're not going to totally wipe out the units that you've charged and you know that, then the return attacks are just going to be that less effective. You're going to have few, fewer hits on you, which means fewer wounds, which means you're less likely to get those ones uh, when you've got a two-up armor save. And if they've got additional AP, then it's just going to mean fewer of those nasty minus AP uh, taking away your armor save because obviously you don't have uh, an invun save to fall back on. So with those things combined, it's only a command point for each of those stratagems. It's absolutely crazy. So you're going to, but that combo will cost you just four command points. 
if you're of the fur uh, and that's at the max you know you don't necessarily need to spend those four command points you don't necessarily necessarily need to have that five man termi unit uh, taking up a command point with fury of the first or you could have them and just not spend the command point so you've got a lot of flexibility there that's what i'm saying but you can absolutely ramp these guys up to the max and if you really really want to and you've got a big unit then you can also do hammer of the wrath that's just one more command point and again it gives you a five up uh, mortal wound on the charge for any model that's within one inch of of the enemy unit um, which you know it's it's good it can do a bit of damage it can plink off a couple of things if you're going into a you know a really if you're really outnumbered and you just think a couple of a couple of mortal wounds will really uh, do me uh, give me an advantage or maybe you're multi-charging and there's a wounded um, character that you can just sort of hit with your unit and maybe plink off a mortal wound just to finish him off but your main target is um, another unit nearby or something like that so it just gives you that flexibility but you probably don't need Hammer of Wrath, but it's there. It's an option. Um, and, you know, I haven't even talked about um, the fact that you can also buff these guys with a chaplain. Now, I'm going to recommend right now you need loads of chaplains. I'm talking two chaplains minimum, Lamartis and another chaplain. And I've actually been using a Terminator chaplain because you can kind of sit there and the odd unit that can get close enough to him to actually target him um, won't have enough damage to get uh, damage capacity to get through his terminator armor so he kind of hangs on there just taking a wound a couple of wounds here and there but living he's really annoying for the opponents so that's just one thing you might want to consider a terminator chaplain just deep striking in and just sort of wandering around your lines buffing who needs it it's quite funny quite satisfying and you know very useful and again adds to that flexibility adds to that utility especially as you can take uh two uh liturgies essentially uh in terms of the other liturgies of course you've got um the ability to give a shooting unit plus one to wound and we all know how powerful plus one to wound is um on the attack on the assault and we have that for free that comes with all blood angels but giving what you know the sanguinary guard plus one to wound you've got a chaplain deep striking nearby and he gets that liturgy uh, litany off and he gives those sanguinary guard plus one to wound then they're really really going to be wrecking because they're going to have reroll wounds they're going to be ignoring cover they're going to be ap minus two um, and they're going to be wounding on, you know, potentially, uh, well, threes or even potentially twos against Toughness 3 infantry. They're just going to massacre blobs and they're going to hammer down elite infantry. They are just going, they are just so good. They are so, so good, Sanguinary Guard. I'm just, you know, they just can tear, they can do anything. They are like just as good as Death Company. You know when you get that perfect death company assault drop off, you know, you drop down your 12, 13 death company on a flank. We've all done it a thousand times. And you just charge in and you just wreck like two, potentially three units with a death company assault. Well, the sanguinary guard can do that as well. And it means you're doing it, you sort of get, as I said uh, at the beginning of this uh, sort of uh, explanation of the sanguinary guard, you're giving them that one, two punch. So the Sanguinary Guard and the Terminators, you know, the Terminators have that two-up save, the Sanguinary Guard have that two-up save. If you've got maybe eight, nine Sanguinary Guard and then five Terminators, you're dropping down 12, 13, um, maybe even 14 uh, two-up save units, each with two wounds. If you put them in cover, even against uh, armies that have the ability to use decent uh, or quite a high level of AP minus one or AP minus two, you're still going to be probably on two-ups, three-up saves. And, um, you know, just be quite hard to dig out. And by the time your opponent's dealt with that, your death company are going to be coming in. Another 3d6 charge, your death company, you know, activate Savage Echoes at that point and just and move in with your other forces, you know, your infantry that I mentioned earlier that maybe haven't, you know, you still have infantry around on the midfield. You move those guys forward, you activate Savage Echoes, everyone gets the chainsaws out and you just run in and you just do the coup de grace, you just execute your opponent, finish them off. It's just like a sort of one-two punch followed by that final uh, big uppercut that just swings through. That's how you want to be playing, sort of phased attacks um, with your big units. Uh, and if you bring your death company in, the brilliant thing about this is you don't have to, you know, that's a good idea doing that one-two punch, but you can, ju can just do an absolute uh, sort of mega swallow-up destruction uh, pincer movement because you've got that plus one to your charge you can sort of gamble on not having to use the 3d6 charge um, stratagem on every unit that you're assaulting because it's quite nice to bring in the sand guard, give them the 3d6, 
give them a guaranteed charge, and then the next turn, bring the death company in and do the same with them. But that's quite command point heavy. And the other option is um, to bring both units in. And because they're, and they're using different stratagems, that's the key. The only one they want to share is 3d6 charge. But all these stratagems I've mentioned, death on the wind, visage of the damned, explosive du judgment, those are all stratagems that just benefit the sanguinary guard. Fury of the first just benefits terminators, and they're all cheap, which means you've still got the ability to make the death company fight twice. Or, uh, you've still got extra litanies if you've got uh, Lamartis in there, so he's get, giving them the automatic uh, re-roll re to charge. He's getting them... Um, getting reroll hits automatically and uh, casting other litanies as well so you can have these two units you know two chaplains two units just coming in have your sort of main force your, your two battalions uh, deployed holding the center of the line you drop your sanguinary guard and your terminators in amongst that you have your death company in that as well maybe on each flank or as a you know, sort of mix into the center it just depends on the context of the situation of course it does you know it depends on the army you're playing against and your opponent's deployment and that kind of thing but essentially you can do it all at once because the sanguinary guard aren't using stratagems that the death company want to use the litanies uh, can be spread out the the sanguinary sanguinary guard can make use of a litany that makes them more powerful than shooting and the death company can have a litany that makes them more powerful in close combat. So you're getting the best of both worlds. And you just literally, as I said, swallow up your opponent with these two units. Um, and it's just brutal to behold. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how much mileage it'll have because, I, of course, these are new things that we're being able to do. And it almost surprises me. Almost, I'm like, wow, that was incredible. And I'm sure you've had the same when you've been using your units. You're like, whoa, that was that was incredible. Your opponent's like, wow, that was, you know, these blood angels are really powerful now. You know, it's almost taking us by surprise how powerful we are. Um, so, you know, I'm sure we will sort of the momentum of our assaults will slow down a little bit as time goes on, as people learn how to counter us, as more as new tactics and strategies are developed against us. Uh, but again, we'll be developing new tactics and strategies and unit combinations over the coming weeks and months. And I, I'll be having, uh, I'll be filming plenty of battle reports now. Uh, you know, initially I wanted to play games. Battle reports take a long time to do. And I figured it was better to uh, play a load of games, uh, learn a load and be able to share those lessons with you initially and then show them to you. Uh, so, you know, sit tight because there are going to be plenty of battle reports showing you different ways to use your Blood Angels and some really cool lists and some really cool unit combos coming very shortly indeed. So, um, you know, that I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it entertaining. I'm certainly found uh, using Blood Angels the last couple of weeks have been very exciting, uh, really, really fun, uh, really incredible to see uh, what our force, what our faction has become just overnight, just really, really fun. Um, and, you know, I ho hope it lasts, you know, long live the emperor. Uh, you know, I hope I can keep claiming heads for Sanguinius and for the emperor's cause and for the Imperium. So, uh, you know, this has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.